define the concept of secure baselines in the context of cybersecurity, highlighting their role in establishing a foundation for secure systems configurations. Is it A, secure baselines are static configurations that rarely change, providing flexibility in system administration? Is it B, establishing secure baselines involves defining a set of minimal security settings for system configurations? Is it C, secure baselines focus solely on network configurations, excluding operating system settings? Or is it D, dynamic adjustments to secure baselines are discouraged to maintain consistency across different environments? Choose one answer. You now five seconds. Hey, the correct answer is B. Establishing secure baselines involves defining a set of minimal security settings for system configurations. Secure baselines involve defining minimal security settings to establish a foundation for secure system configurations. And now for the incorrect answers, option A. Secure baselines are static, but not for the sake of flexibility. They provide a consistent security foundation. Option C, secure baselines include settings for both networks and operating systems to ensure comprehensive security. And option D, while consistency is essential, dynamic adjustments may be required to address emerging security threats. And for the next question for exam, question number two. And the question states, explain the concept of system hardening and its importance in mitigating potential security vulnerab vulnerabilities, providing examples of hardening measures. Is it A, system hardening involves making systems more susceptible to cyber threats for increased monitoring opportunities? Is it B, hardening targets focus solely on installing the latest security patches without modifying default configurations? Is it C, system hardening enhances security by reducing the attack surface and implementing strict security controls? Or is it D, hardening measures primarily address physical security concerns, safeguarding systems from physical attacks? Choose one answer. You have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. System hardening enhances security by reducing the attack surface and implementing strict security controls. System hardening involves reducing the attack surface and implementing strict controls to enhance overall security. And now for the incorrect answers, option A is incorrect. Hardening aims to reduce susceptibility. Hardening seeks to decrease susceptibility to cyber threats, not increase it for monitoring. Option B is in in inaccurate. Um, hardening involves more than patch installation. While patching is essential, hardening includes various measures beyond patch installation. And option D is incorrect. Hardening is focused on cyber threats. Hardening measures primarily addresses cybersecurity concerns, not physical security. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, discuss the security considerations associated with the use of wireless devices in an enterprise environment, highlighting potential risks and mitigations. Is it A, wireless devices are inherently secure due to their mobility, reducing the likelihood of targeted attacks? Is it B, security risks associated with wireless devices include unauthorized access and eavesdropping on wireless communications? Is it C, enterprise security is not affected by the presence of wireless devices as they operate on isolated networks? Or is it D, mitigating wireless devices risks involves, risk involves exclusively relying on encryption, rendering other security measures unnecessary? Choose one answer. In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B. Security risks associated with wireless devices include unauthorized access and eavesdropping on wireless communications. Risks with wireless devices include unauthorized access and eavesdropping, emphasizing the need for security measures. And now for the incorrect answers, option A. Wireless devices whilst mobile are not inherently secure. They require proper security measures. Mobility does not guarantee security. Option C, wireless devices, if not properly secured, can introduce vulnerabilities to enterprise security. Wireless devices can impact overall enterprise security. And option D, while encrypted encryption is crucial, additional security measures are necessary to address various risks. Multiple measures are needed. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, explain the security challenges associated with the use of mobile solutions in a comp corporate environment and recommend measures to enhance mobile security. Is it A, mobile solutions are inherently secure, requiring minimal attention to security measures? Is it B, security challenges with mobile solutions include data loss, unauthorized access, and insecure mobile applications? 
is it C, mobile security is exclusively the responsibility of individual users and organizations have minimal control, or is it option B, D, enhancing mobile security involves restricting the use of mobile devices within the corporate network? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is B. Security challenges with mobile solutions include data loss, unauthorized access, and insecure mobile applications. Security challenges with mobile solutions encompass data loss, unauthorized access, and insecure applications. And now for incorrect answers, uh, mobile solutions are not inherently secure as they require significant attention to security measures. Mobile solutions require robust uh, security measures. Option C, uh, while user awareness is vital, Organizations must implement controls and policies to enhance mobile security. Organizations play a crucial role in mobile security. And option D, effective mobile security requires comprehensive measures beyond network restrictions. Mobile security extends beyond network restrictions. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, outline key wireless security settings that organizations should implement to secure their wireless networks, emphasizing the role in preventing unauthorized access. Is it A, disabling encryption enhances wireless security by making networks less attractive to attackers? Is it B, open authentication with no password requirements is a secure approach to wireless network access? Is it C, changing default wireless network names like SSIDs regularly is unnecessary as it doesn't impact security? Or is it option D, implementing strong encryption protocols, changing default passwords and enabling MAC filtering contribute to wireless network security? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is D. Implementing strong encryption protocols, changing default passwords, and en enabling MAC filtering contribute to wireless network security. Strong encryption, password changes, and MAC filtering are essential measures for securing wireless networks. And now for the incorrect answers, option A, disabling encryption weakness, weakens security and makes network more vulnerable to attacks. Encryption is critical for security. Option B, open authentication without password exposes networks to unauthorized access and security threats open authentication poses significant security risks and option c regularly changing ssids help prevent unauthorized access and improves overall wireless network security regularly changing ssids enhances security to some degree and for the next question of our exam question number six and the question states explain the importance of secure coding practices in application development highlighting how these practices contribute to mitigating common security vulnerabilities is it a secure coding practices only focus on enhancing code readability and man maintainability is it b the primary goal of secure coding practices is to exp expedite the development process without compromising security is it C, secure coding practices help prevent security vulnerabilities by incorporating security measures during development? Or is it D, security considerations in coding are irre irrelevant as external security measures can address all vulnerabilities? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Secure coding practices help prevent security vulnerabilities by incorporating security measures during development. Securing Secure coding practices play a crucial role in preventing security vulnerabilities by integrating security measures during the development phase. And now for the incorrect answers, option A, while readability and maintainability are considerations, security is a fundamental aspect of secure coding practices. Security is a primary focus of secure coding practices. Option B, uh, the primary goal of secure coding is to prioritize security without compromising speed in the development process. Security is not compromised for speed. And option D, coding practices are vital, relying solely on external measures may leave vulnerabilities in the application. Coding practices are essential for robust security. And now for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, outline key security considerations that organizations should incorporate into the acquisition and procurement process when obtaining new software or hardware. Is it A, security considerations in acquisitions are limited to assessing the cost effectiveness of the products? Is it B, organizations should prioritize acquisition based solely on features and functionality with security as a secondary concern? Is it C, integra integrating security requirements into the procurement process ensures that purchased products meet organizations' security standards? 
What is it? D. The acquisition process does not impact overall security as security measures are implemented post-acquisition. Choose one answer. You know, five seconds. And the quick answer is C. Integrating security requirements into the procurement process ensures that purchased products meet organizational security standards. Incorporating security requirements into the procurement process ensures that pro purchase products align with organizational security standards. And now for the incorrect answers, option A, cost effectiveness is one aspect. However, security considerations are integral to the acquisition process. Security is a primary concern and consideration. Option B, security should be a primary concern alongside features and functionality during the acquisition phase. Security should not be secondary. And option D, uh, integrating security measures during acquisition is essential as post-acquisition measures may not fully address vulnerabilities. Pre-acquisition security is crucial. And for the next question for exam, question number 8. And the question states, explain the significance of proper assignment and accounting of assets in an organization's information security strategy, emphasizing the impact on accountability and risk management. Is it a assets assignment and accounting only impact financial reporting and have no relevance to security? Is it B, proper assignment and accounting of assets enhance accountability, aiding in effective risk management? Is it C, organizations should prioritize asset assignment based solely on employees' hierarchy, regardless of job responsibilities? Or is it D, asset management is exclusively the responsibility of the IT department and other departments need not to be involved? Choose one answer. You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is B. Proper assignment and accounting of assets enhance accountability, aiding in effective risk management. Proper assignment and accountability of assets contribute to enhance accountability and effective risk management. And now for the incorrect answers, option A, asset assignment and accounting are crucial for both financial recording and overall security. Uh, security is a significant aspect. Option C, asset assignment should consider job responsibilities alongside employee hierarchy for effective security. Job responsibilities are a critical factor. And option D, asset management requires collaboration across departments to ensure comprehensive and accurate accounting. Accounting. Cross departmental Im uh, involvement is essential. And for the next question of our exam, question number nine. And the question states, discuss the importance of continuous monitoring and asset tracking and maintaining a robust cybersecurity posture, highlighting the roles in threat detection and incident response. Is it A, continuing Continuous monitoring is unnecessary as periodic security assessments provide sufficient protection. Is it B, asset tracking primarily focuses on physical devices and has minimal relevance to cybersecurity? Option C, continuing, continuous monitoring aids in real-time threat detection, facilitating timely incident response. Or is it option D, asset tracking is only relevant for inventory management and does not contribute to cybersecurity? Choose one answer. You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Continuous monitoring aids in real-time threat detection facilitating timely incident response. Continuous monitoring is essential for real-time threat detection contributing to timely incident response. And now for the incorrect answers. Option A. Continuous monitoring offers real-time insights. Complementing periodic assessments for comprehensive security, continuous monitoring enhances security. Option B. Asset tracking includes both physical and digital assets with significant relevance to cybersecurity. Digital assets are equally critical. And option D. Asset tracking is crucial for both inventory management and maintaining a robust cybersecurity posture. Uh, asset tracking aids in cybersecurity. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. But before that, ladies and gents, don't forget to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. And now back to our question, outline key security considerations that organizations should address during the disposal and decommissioning of hardware and software assets, emphasizing data security and environmental impact. Is it a disposal and decommissioning have no impact on data security as data is inherently secure once assets are decommissioned? Is it B, organizations can prioritize speed over data sanitization during disposal as decommissioned assets are no longer in use? Is it C, proper disposal and decommissioning involve security data sanitization to prevent data breaches and consider environmentally friendly practices? Or is it D, decommissioned assets are automatically exempt from environmental regulations as they are not, no longer in use? Choose one answer. You know, five seconds.
And the correct answer is C. Proper disposal and decommissioning involve secure data sanitization to prevent data breaches and consider environmentally friendly practices. Secure data sanitization and environmentally friendly practices are crucial during disposal and decommissioning. And now for the incorrect answers, option A, data security must be a consideration during disposal and decommissioning to prevent potential breaches, data security remains a concern. Option B, prioritizing speed over data sanitization can lead to data breaches, compromising security, data sanitization is essential. And option D, decommissioned assets must be disposed of uh, properly to adhere to environmental regulations and prevent negative impacts. Proper disposal is essential for environmental compliance. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you guys next time.